Okay, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, these things down here. These are the uh, tone pots for the uh, distortion channel. I should have said the gain channel. What you've got, what I did was to uh, actually mark the board with what they say. You've got treble, a mid, and a bass pot. And they only work uh, really when, uh, when you're in the gain channel. So don't waste your time messing around uh, in the clean channel. You just don't, you don't hear a thing. All right, what Nick said, just bear me a second, exactly what he said. This is what he does, uh, this is the man that matters at Soriato. What he said, uh, he sets the treble and mid to one o'clock and the bass kind of low at nine o'clock. And then tweak it yourself uh, just for your liking from there. But uh, I have a sneaky feeling, a bit of a guess, that uh, it won't be far out if that's the way he sets them up by default before he ships out an amp that he's built. Uh, so I guess uh, now you know what they are. I'm not sure whether I covered the other things in uh, previous videos, but I'm going to cover them again now. This one here. Let's get it where I need it to be. Where I'm at. This one here. I'll tell you what, let's go start from nothing. This one here. You can see I've got that marked up. That's where you adjust the amount of gain for the overdrive internally. And what you've got, uh, well, the way mine's set up, you can see for yourself. It's about one o'clock. You have another connector, well, another adjuster further down here, which is called the. Uh, this is the thing that adjusts the pie for this. Uh, tube at the back here. Uh, let's see if we can see what mine's set to. Yours will be different. Excuse me. You can see that, uh, maybe you can see, I don't know. It's actually set at about 10 a.m. on mine. There you go. Maybe you can just see that. And that's really uh, most of the adjustments in the amp. This one works now. Fancy that. Uh, not much more I can say except to repeat again what I've said before it's that relay there and that one hidden underneath there you need fastening in one way or another because I tell you now they're going to come out you throw your amp around they'll fall out you have been warned okay here's another little tip you see this resistor here there's one on the V5 as well on V4. What you want to do is to take, you can see that's cut very close to the uh, connector. What I did was put a little hook in there and hook it round and then just solder it. In fact, if you look carefully, that could actually go closer to the pin. You want that resistor right on the pin, actually closer than even I have it. Let's see if I can zoom in without it uh, giving us grief. Let's take a look. You can see there's actually a fair bit of gap. See that? What you want to do is get rid of that gap and have this resistor right on that pin. Makes a hell of a difference to the sound. And a lot of other things such as, uh, in fact, uh, so they say oscillations and all sorts of things in your amp. So the shorter you keep it, the better it is. Another thing you could do, uh, a bit like the original Dumble, uh, in all of this section there was uh, gunk all over there and all down this section uh, it's like uh, sticky gunk that they uh, or Mr. Dumble stuck on there uh, to stop people finding out uh, exactly what the components were great idea until you got a problem also a great idea if you're not the person who's trying to find out what components are used I guess but that's life. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Dumble has his own reasons, really. I wonder if Fender knew about it. Yeah, another thing I like about this amp is uh, 
you know, it's about as near as you can get to uh, an original normal, if there is such a thing uh, that's a standard, which I doubt it is because they were all different. But this design's been uh, cobbled together or put together from uh, from one of the designs, I'm sure. And you know, when you look at uh, something like that on a compatible uh, power transformer, it uh, must be telling you something. They don't just put it on there just to make it look good. They put it on there for a reason. Of course, in this amp, uh, there are a lot of differences, uh, I guess, uh, slightly different than the, the, the original Dumble. I know that some of the circuitry is just slightly different, uh, but not by much. So I guess, uh, like I said, if you want to get something as close as you can ever get to uh, to spending your fifty thousand dollars, assuming you got it to play with, uh, well, there you go. You want one of these? This is the Overtone HRM by Sariatone. When I was building this amp, I did try out various sets of six L six. These are six L six WGC. I think I'm right in saying that. And these are from uh, Tad or Tube Amp Doctor. I think you find them at tubeampdoctor.com. I don't own shares in it either. But all the other tubes I tried, I even tried some uh, uh, some original new old stock Philips. Uh, and the variance uh, between these two uh, with the bias uh, was quite considerable. I also tried uh, some other brands, I forget which ones, but Nothing came anywhere near to these. These two come within about uh, just from the tone pot. Uh, excuse me, just from the uh, the bias pot there. Bias pot, should I say? Depends how you, where you come from. <laughs> right from the bias pot, uh, these are within about four volts. I couldn't get it any nearer, but I can tell you now, uh, mismatched tubes made a hell of a difference. Uh, uh, I mean, I've seen it to eight and nine volts difference, and you couldn't uh, you couldn't really get any better. Another thing I I, I asked Nick uh, about I, I I use a a bias master uh, device for measuring the uh, you know the, the the bias. They just fit in these sockets and uh, connects to a little meter and it'll tell you the the, the voltage and it's very easy to to see the real time voltage rather than messing around underneath. And one of the things I noticed, uh, I happened to leave the meter connected and uh, play the guitar and up went the bias. And I thought, uh oh, here's a problem. But in fact, uh, if you do that, uh, the bias does actually increase as you play louder. So uh, if anybody's got a, a bias master or something similar, don't worry. That's what it does. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, on to preamp tubes. Uh, I've got... Uh, 12 AX7 WA. Let's have a look. WA. Twelve AX7 W. Oh, oh I've got that wrong. They're 12 AX7 A dash C. That's what they are. I just happen to have a couple of spare ones that I got from TAD. Or Tad or Tube Map Doctor or call him what you will. Uh, that were selected tubes, they were well. This one here, it was an old tube I had kicking around. I say old, it's a new old stock, old tube. Uh, Jan Phillips uh, 5751 seems to work very nice in there. Uh, it's supposed to be compatible with the 12AX7, so I guess it does work nice. What I have got coming as well is, uh, and I'll video this a bit later, is uh, some better tube uh, covers. You know what I mean. Let me go and get one. Oops. Yeah, fancy that. Yeah, these things. These look pretty, uh, pretty crap to me. And the ones I've got coming are substantially better than that. In fact, uh, there's some I found that were new old stock. Uh, they were on eBay. And I think they were about four or five dollars a piece, which sounds a lot. Till you realise these are new old stock from 1956. 
and they uh, they actually uh, touch the tube and act as a heat sink. They're like an uh, aluminium type of heat sink. They, they got the spring in the top, just like this one. Uh, but they look really cool, and uh, you know, it's good to make your own. Just a little bit different.